Hi everyone and uh, welcome in this short video. Um, it's about showing you uh, a few new components we introduced in Apache Nifi 119, allowing you to push data into Snowflake using Snowpipe. Uh, previously, if you wanted to push data into Snowflake or pull data out of Snowflake, you will be using the GDBC components uh, and obviously uh, you will be using a GDBC connection. So, for example, you would execute, uh, you would use execute SQL record processor or put database record processor over GDBC to interact with Snowflake. Um, this is great. This works perfectly nicely. However, um, since it's GDBC, uh, it's uh, it can be quite limited in terms of performances. So, if you want to push large amounts of data into Snowflake you may want to consider another approach. Um, in this video, I'm showing you how to use the new processors that we recently introduced so that you can push data into Snowflake using Snowpipe. So I will go over the flow and uh, show you a quick demo. So first of all, um, I went into this uh, Kaggle contest to download a large enough data set for uh, for the demonstration. So I uh, downloaded uh, those files on my local machine. Um, I'm specifically interested in one uh, one file that is about one gig. It's containing about three million um, records and it's all of, uh, let's say, the inventory of the library in Seattle. So that's, um, that's what I downloaded. It's already available on my laptop. That's what I will be uh, uploading and loading into a table in Snowflake. Um, I will be sharing all of the links in the description of the video so that you can run uh, everything on your side as well. Um, and I also have my Snowflake account uh, already set up. It's a trial. And I created a database, dummy database named uh, my database. OK, that's, that's all I did. Um, and then I will be showing you step by step uh, how you can use Nifi to push data into Snowflake. So the first step of my flow is very easy. It's just get file. It's about getting the file uh, on my laptop and have it as a flow file. So if I uh, run this, uh, this is actually going to load the file uh, in Nifi. So I have my file. Uh, this is a CSV file. It's about one gig, um, a bit less, and that's what I'm going to ingest. Okay, so it's here. Um, and then the first step of my flow is to push this data into um, an internal stage in Snowflake. So this is actually going to upload the data into Snowflake into the specified internal stage. And then I will be using Snowpipe to load this data from the internal stage into the final uh, table. Uh, so because I don't have a great internet connection, and this is actually me uploading data from my laptop into uh, Snowflake in the cloud, uh, this step is actually going to take quite some time, like um, maybe four or five minutes. Um, so I will be pausing the recording at some point so that we uh, we skip all of, uh, all of this time. Uh, but obviously, if you were running uh, NiFi, in your cloud provider next to where Snowflake is running, obviously all of this will be much faster. Uh, but in this case, in this specific situation, uh, the upload is going to take quite some time. So um, if we look into this processor and in the configuration, the first thing you want to configure is uh, a Snowflake connection pool. Uh, this is a straightforward controller service that is based on the GDBC one. So basically you just provide the GDBC connection string um, it's made of your account ID, the location uh, of where your Snowflake instance is running, and the cloud provider. That's that's it. Then you give your username and, and password. You can obviously use a service account if you want, but in this case, I'm just using uh, my username and password, and I'm specifying the, the database name that I'm going to use for this demo. Uh, that's, that's all. Uh, as you can see here, we have a lot of properties for very uh, specific uh, let's say, GDBC connection management uh, lifecycle and so on. Uh, but you don't have to worry about uh, any of this. So that's all. We have our GDBC connection pool. Um, this is to, to connect uh, with uh, Snowflake. And then you can um, uh, specify the internal stage where you want to push the data. 
So you have uh, a few options. You can use the named internal stage. So in that case, we suppose that you created already a stage by yourself uh, with a specific name, and that's what you will be using. You will be pushing this data uh, into this named internal stage. Then there is a table because out of the box for any table you have in Snowflake, you will have an internal stage for this table and same for every user. In my case, I'm going to use the table stage and I specify the name of my database, the name of the schema and the name of the table. Actually, I'm going to go uh, straight to um, straight to my database and actually uh, create uh, my table. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go here um, and I'm going to create my table. So actually I prepared the query and this is, uh, this is going to be my table. So I create or replace table, uh, inventory, and then I'm providing uh, the columns with uh, their types. So it's based on the CSV data that I'm going to, uh, to load in there, okay? So that's it. Uh, we create the table. The table is created. All good. So that's the first step. And I could actually uh, run this step already. So I'm going to stop this and stop this. Uh, and I, I can uh, I can um, start this step. Okay. So this will be actually uploading the data into the uh, internal stage. Okay. The, the next step is to actually uh, start the ingest process using Snowpipe. So if we go in this process, or you just need to configure an ingest manager provider, which is uh, a controller service. So if we look into this and if we look at the configuration, uh, it's um, also straightforward. So uh, you need to provide a Snowflake URL. Uh, so it's very similar to the GDBC string. Um, that's it. Very, uh, very simple account ID, uh, the region where your Snowflake deployment is running, cloud provider, and that's it. Uh, then you give your username. And then this is where there is uh, something uh, specific. You need to provide a, a, a private key service because you will need to provide your private key for this user to interact with uh, Snowflake. I will get back to this in a minute. And then you give the name of the database, the name of the schema, and the name of the pipe that you previously created. So I'm going to uh, go into Snowflake and create the pipe. So let's do this. I go into pipes. And actually, uh, my pipe is already created. So I'm not going to recreate it. But uh, basically, that's that's what I executed. Create or replace pipe, uh, the name of my pipe. Uh, I set the auto ingest to false. And then I'm adding the copy statement, where I'm saying copy into inventory from uh, at percentage inventory, which is basically the, the syntax to reference the uh, internal table stage. And then I'm specifying the file format. So I'm saying it's uh, going to be CSV uh, with uh, the field delimiter and what is um, enclosing the, the fields. Uh, that's it. Uh, once my pipe is created, I can go back to NiFi. So very quickly, the private key service is just a way for you to specify um the um, the private key of your user so uh if you go to the documentation there is um there are some explanations about how to configure keeper authentication so in this case you can just execute the comments uh as provided here uh this will generate a private key and then you can generate a public key out of it uh and then you would need to go into your database into snowflake uh, start to watch it and execute this comment where you say alter user your user and set RSA uh, public key and the value of your public key. Okay, so that's what you do on the Snowflake side, and then on the NiFi side in the private key service here, uh, I'm basically just uh, giving the path to the private uh, key file that I generated. You could also copy paste the key directly in this field if you want, but in my case, I just wanted to reference a file that is uh, on my laptop. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, that's that's all. Um, so as you can see here, the file is uh, still loading into the internal stage, uh, but here uh, this is going to start the Snowflake ingest process. 
And then here we have a processor that is just going to check with Snowflake uh, what's the status of the ingest job. Uh, that's how you can get information in case there is a failure for some reasons. I don't know, some uh, error with your data, some um, wrong schema, uh, mismatch with the columns, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's where you will get the status. Uh, and in case of failure, it will get to the failure relationship and you will get the information about what happened. And in case of success, uh, it's going to success. And then there is the retry. So we keep asking Snowflake, um, um, okay, what's what's about my job? And, and as long as the, the ingest job is running, we will keep looping the flow file in this retry relationship. Okay. Um, so that's, that's what is going on. So I'm just going to wait a bit uh, here so that the, the flow file is going to the next step. Um, while I'm doing this, uh, just um, here, I'm just showing again uh, the, the statement for creating the pipe here. So that's all I need. And then the inventory table. And then you can see for now there is no records, uh, so no rows and no data. Okay, so everything is empty and that's where everything is going to be uh, loaded. So I'm going to post the recording uh, so that you don't have to wait with me. And I will get back as soon as uh, the upload into the internal stage is completed. Okay, so um, I successfully ingested my data into the internal stage. Uh, we can see here it took uh, a bit more than six minutes to load uh, 800 meg of data, okay? Uh, if I list Q and I look at my flow file, um, some attributes that would be interesting. Um, so some data about the file on my uh, on the local file system, the name of the file. But here is what is interesting. Here we have uh, a name or file path for the stage file in Snowflake. That's what we are going to provide uh, to you. Uh, to the next processor. So here I can start and it's done uh, immediately. And then I can go here, start this as well. Uh, and then it's going to retry, okay? So we keep asking Snowflake, what's uh, what's about my ingest job? Um, and here we can see that uh, we have this uh, Snowflake staged file path attribute with uh, with the UUID of uh, of the file that we loaded into Snowflake, so that's what we use to keep asking Snowflake, okay, what 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 is about what's about my uh, ingest job that is uh, currently running? So uh, as you can see, we uh, we keep asking Snowflake, so we retry uh, the the data is penalized, so we are not trying uh, uh, like we are not trying uh, every millisecond uh, we we are just asking uh, Snowflake uh, whenever the, the job is finished. And in this case, it's uh, successful. So if we if we look uh, here, uh, the file is loaded. And if we look at um, the lineage duration, uh, it's, it's saying uh, 12 minutes. Um, but I think we actually, because, uh, because I was talking quite a bit uh, here, uh, uh, the, the, the flow file stayed here, but actually the, the whole process is about taking, it's taking about seven minutes, uh, basically to, to load, uh, to load this file. Uh, and if we, uh, look here, um, in the, in the attributes, um, you know, we don't have anything new. Um, so we still have the UUID here. So that's that's it. And now, if we go to the uh, uh, inventory table, uh, if I go here and go back here, we can see that we have our uh, almost three million rows uh, and the amount of data that we loaded. And if I go to the data preview and select a warehouse uh, and preview, uh, we can see uh, the data that that uh, got loaded um, into uh, into Snowflake. So we have all of the information we want. So that's um, that's how uh, you can use those new processors to load uh, data into Snowflake. Uh, very straightforward. As I said uh, before, 
uh, you can skip this step. Uh, this step puts puts no flake internal stage in case your data is already loaded uh, into object stores. Like you already did it, and you are providing uh, the correct information to the next uh, step directly. If you right click on the processor and go to view usage, uh, you will get some uh, additional information about the processor, how it's working, and so on. Uh, and I strongly encourage you to to look at um, at and look at those uh, at those documentation uh, details. For example, if you are pushing the data into S3, you could have list S3 to list the files uh, into S3. Uh, and then just uh, update attribute to add the, the attribute we were talking about before, um, and then start the Snowflake ingest processor. So as I said, you could push directly to the object store or get the files that are already in the object store and then use the next processors to, um, to have the Snowflake ingest process started. That's it. I will uh, be adding uh, in the description of this video all of the links. Uh, to what have been showing today. Hopefully it was uh, useful and more videos are coming soon to talk about um, what has been recently added in NiFi and also showing you uh, some, some cool use cases I've been working on uh, lately. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.